morning and welcome to our service today from St John's and St Mary's Churches in Devizes. Today is the second Sunday before Lent. We begin with our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We meet in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. The collect for the second Sunday before Lent. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reign supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. The reading is taken from St Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, 
by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you hear someone say, this is the head, what do you think they might be talking about? This is the head. If you are visiting the Natural History Museum, then you might think the head was part of a skeleton, maybe that of a small animal or insect. 
If you're visiting a school or college, then you might be being introduced to the principal. If you were a musician, then you might be looking at the scroll and peg box of a violin. If you are interested in coins, then you might be examining the side of a coin where the monarch's head appears. If you were walking along a river, then you would expect to be approaching its source. If you are in a pub, then you might be admiring a foaming pint of beer. This is the head. Our reading from Colossians this morning is an ancient poem, which is based on the different meanings of the word for head. It's not so obvious in our translation, but all of these phrases play on the Greek word for head. Jesus Christ is the firstborn. Jesus Christ is before all things. Jesus Christ is the head of the body, which is the church. Jesus Christ is the beginning. This is a very cleverly constructed poem, but it wasn't written to show off literary prowess. It was written to tell us about Jesus. It was composed to tell us about the centrality and the supremacy of Jesus Christ. The person who wrote it believed that the more we know about Jesus, the more we will understand about God, who he is, what he has done, and what it means for us to live with him. Christianity isn't simply about a particular way of being religious. Christianity isn't about a particular system for how to be saved and live forever. Christianity isn't simply a different way of holiness. Christianity is about Jesus, the Christ. And this poem, one of the earliest Christian poems ever written, is a good place to begin exploring Christianity. The poem begins, Christ is the image of the invisible God. Nobody has ever seen God, but in Jesus God has come near to us, and God has become one of us. John writes in his Gospel, just a few verses after this morning's reading, No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Now, if I'm sitting at home and there is someone sitting in the next room, I can't see them because there's a wall in the way. But if there's a mirror out in the hallway... I may be able to look out of my door and see in the mirror the mirror image of the person in the next room. In the same way, Jesus is the mirror image of the God who is there, but who we normally cannot see. We may be aware of God's presence. Many people of various religions and none have admitted that there is something or somebody there. But with Jesus, Christians believe that we find ourselves looking at God himself. The wonderful thing is that the more we look at Jesus, the more we realise that God is the God of utter self-giving. When you realise that Jesus reveals who God is, then gratitude is the first and most appropriate reaction. Overwhelming gratitude for who God is and what God has done. The poem in Colossians declares that Jesus holds all things together, both the first creation and the new creation. Sometimes people talk as if Christianity wants to do away with the world in which we live, as if this world is worthless, dirty and even evil. Some groups, like the Amish, separate themselves from this world so that they won't be contaminated by it. Some people talk as if we need to be rescued from our lives into a brighter, purer world. The Bible describes the new creation as being full of light and peace. The book of Revelation describes it as the home of God among mortals, living in harmony together, where death will be no more, mourning, crying and pain will be no more. The world is full of beauty, power and wonder, alongside the dirt, 
the pain, the bitterness and the evil. We struggle to get the balance right between the first creation and the new creation. But this poem in Colossians does it brilliantly. The poem says that Jesus Christ is the one through whom and for whom the whole creation was made in the first place. The Gospel reading echoes this. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. This is a remarkable thing to say about an individual person. Just think about it for a moment. The early Christians said that Jesus, the carpenter from Nazareth, was responsible for the creation of the world. That all things came into being through him and for him. It is a remarkable thing to say about the natural world. This world was Jesus' idea. It was his workmanship. It is beautiful, powerful and wonderful because Jesus made it like that. When the stunning beauty of the world causes you to catch your breath, when you see an amazing sunrise or sunset, when you watch the perfect planet, remember that that perfection comes from Jesus. But this world is full of pain, ugliness and evil too. And they are summed up in death itself. Across the world, species are being wiped out due to humanity's greed and self-centeredness. That wasn't the original intention. God has acted to heal the world of the wickedness and corruption which have so radically infected it. As the Gospel puts it, what has come into being through him was life, and the life was the light of all people. God has brought life through the same one through whom the world was made in the first place. This is the central point of the poem in Colossians. The very same Jesus through whom the world was made in the first place is the same Jesus through whom the world has now been redeemed. He is the firstborn of all creation and the firstborn from the dead. Jesus is therefore the blueprint for life in all its fullness, which is on offer through the gospel. Jesus Christ is the head of the body, the head of the church. Jesus Christ is the first person to rise from the dead. Jesus Christ is the one through whose cruel death on the cross, God has dealt with our greed and self-centeredness and brought us peace and reconciliation. And above all, Jesus Christ is the one through whom the new creation has now begun. Jesus is the blueprint for life in all its fullness. Jesus Christ is the one in whom we are called to discover what it means to be truly human. So often we settle for a life that is good enough. We settle for second best in life. Jesus summons us to life in all its fullness, a life full of grace and truth, enabling all species to flourish on this planet. Jesus Christ is the head of the church and through the words of the liturgy we are regularly reminded that we are the body of Christ. The purpose of the church, the body of Christ, is not to be a place of entertainment. The purpose of the church is not to be a refuge for its members. The purpose of the church is not to be a cosy social club. The church, the body of Christ, exists for one reason, to proclaim Jesus Christ the image of the invisible God and the firstborn of all creation. Thanks be to God. Amen. We say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for the church and to the world. As the season of Lent begins this Wednesday, we pray for the Church. We give thanks for the creative ways in which Christians have responded to the difficulties of the past year through online services and practical help for those isolated or impoverished by the pandemic. Guide us as we reflect on our experiences Show us what should be retained and developed, and help us to restore and improve what we have lost. We pray especially for our choir and the revival during the months ahead of the uplifting music which distinguishes our church. We pray too that we may recover the sense of fellowship which has become attenuated during the lockdowns, and that we may soon, once again, be able to work with our local community through Omne Vaduna and open the book. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our strife torn world. We pray especially that the rollout of vaccines may not become another occasion for quarrels among nations, but rather that all may realise the interdependence of humankind and cooperate in bringing vaccines to everyone. We pray too for international cooperation in healing the natural world, and we give thanks that the United States has changed its stance. And we pray for peace in areas where people are reduced to destitution and forced into refugee camps by military conflict. In particular, we pray for the people of South Sudan, with whom our diocese has close links. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you, Father, all who are suffering because of the pandemic. We pray for all who are in hospital, stricken in many cases by fear and out of contact with their loved ones. We give thanks for the dedication of doctors, nurses and other hospital staff and we pray that they may find the physical and emotional strength to carry on with their vital work. We pray for all who have been bereaved, especially for those who have been deprived of the chance to say farewell or hold a fitting funeral. We give thanks for the speedy rollout of the vaccines and we pray that it may begin to reduce the numbers suffering from the virus. And we pray for all who have been affected indirectly by the pandemic, for all those whose treatment for other diseases has been put on hold, for all who have had to live in isolation from others, for all children whose education has been seriously interrupted, for all who have lost their jobs and been deprived of their economic security. Help us to relieve suffering by any means open to us by donating to food banks or checking up on isolated people, for example. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our prayers are 
off today, particularly for Rosanna Winter, Patricia Edward Jones, Brian and Brenda Batchelor, Sandra and John Hoadley, Mary Dainty, Faith Davis, Tony Oxenham, Maureen Fall, John and June. And let us also, in a few moments of silence, bring before God those known to us as individuals whose troubles weigh on our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we bring before you, Lord, all who have recently died, and especially Julian Edgington, and all those whose years mind falls at this time, especially John Bartholomew, Peter Bennett, John Garrood, Peter Mapp, and John Trapp. As we remember those who meant much to us, we give thanks for the blessings that they brought to us, and we pray for the grace to follow their good examples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we share the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer a sign of peace to those who are with us. We continue our service with a prayer for this time of coronavirus. Let us pray. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please join me in an act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus Christ, since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I humbly pray that you would come spiritually to my soul. Come, Lord Jesus, come and cleanse me, heal me, strengthen me, and unite me to yourself now and forevermore. Amen. Lord of life, with unbounding joy, we offer you our sacrifice of praise. As we are fed with the bread of heaven, may we know your resurrection power through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.